Little throwback. Here's McNorton. He's got a ton of room. Down to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Bison. North Dakota State wins the Division I Football Championship. When FCS playoffs pairings were announced, everyone knew that to get to Texas, you have to go through Fargo. The Jackrabbits ran themselves into the playoffs as an at-large and then to the program's first win in the FCS playoffs last week. Now they travel 200 miles north to Bison Country. Here, North Dakota State enters the playoffs as the number one seed. They hope to do their own Texas two-step in January. If you like your FCS playoff football loud, you've come to the right place. The Fargo Dome is jacked up. Second round action here in the FCS playoffs as they welcome South Dakota State today. Here's the brackets. The Jackrabbits get the jump with a dominant win last Saturday, but a big challenge here in round two at the Fargo Dome today. We welcome you inside the Fargo Dome. Dan Gatowski, my partner, is John Gregory. And, John, everything has set up so well for North Dakota State, the number one seed, defending their championship from a year ago. But today they've got to stop a very good runner for the Jackrabbits. And they do. Zach Zenner, just a sophomore. This guy is just a leader in rusher in the FCS at 1,998 yards on the year. He's averaging seven yards every time he touches the football. They were the only team in South Dakota State that recruited him as a running back. Everybody else wanted him as a linebacker. So he's got a lot on the line today, but he's a talented running back. The Bison defense is built to stop the run, so that may be an advantage for them. John, you're a former FCS playoff player. You've been there. What about the mindset for the Bison this week? What is Craig Bull preaching to his kids to make sure they're in the right frame of mind? Well, kids take on the personality of their head coach, and he talks about the principles of football all the time. It's the blocking, the tackling, and not doing anything too fancy, just getting the job done. And this team is very talented, but they're very composed. But look for them to play extremely hard today. This is the 100th meeting between these two teams. The head coaches are talking now. We'll kick it off when we come back to Fargo. Division I student athletes have higher SAT and ACT scores than college bound students. The number of us receiving diplomas is at an all time high. African American males who are student athletes are 10% more likely to graduate. Still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks? You need to do your homework. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. First day of December here in Fargo, North Dakota. A little bit tailgate friendly for these people, John. They're out there enjoying it as much as they can, and uh, they're glad to duck inside for kickoff here. Uh, living room temperatures, of course, here inside the Fargo Dome, and uh, it's just, again, shaped up so well for this Bison team heading into the FCS playoffs coming into the second round here. And here's the head coach, John Stiglmeyer, with a great resume as uh, his team getting the uh, the first success they've ever had last weekend against Eastern Illinois. And then with Craig Bull, uh, the head coach for North Dakota State, his program is exactly where he wants it to be as uh, he hopes they're peaking at the right time. And it sure looks like they have been, John, the way that uh, their offense has been producing. Yeah, and it, it was a pleasure talking with both of these coaches this week. Uh, I think both the coaches feel like their teams are ready for this football game. I mentioned at the top, they take on the personality of their coaches, but uh, these teams are an awful lot alike. Should be a fun, interesting afternoon. 
So the coin toss is won by the home team and the Bison will have decided to kick off and that gives South Dakota State's Jackrabbits first shot on offense. And we will keep tabs on the noise meter here at the Fargo Dome but everybody is revved up and raring to go now as Adam Keller puts the boots and kicks off this football to start this game and a return all but almost to the 24 yard line Dom White takes it and returns it for South Dakota State. And there's the starting quarterback, Austin Subner, just a sophomore. 6'5", 220 pounds, so he's got size, and you can see his numbers there. Almost a one-to-one -one ratio, John, between touchdowns and interceptions. And here we go, first and 10 from the 24-yard line as the Jackrabbits have to deal with the loud noise here from the get-go. Hand off to Zenner, who tries to cut outside. Only gets maybe a yard or two. Grant Olson on the tackle. And here's the impact players. Zenner in the backfield offensively. Marcus Williams, the junior right corner. A dominant defensive player in the conference. Look for him to make some big statements early for the, de the defense for North Dakota State. And the crowd is being encouraged to just pump up that volume on second and long. Zenner inside for not much. Maybe another yard. Carlton Littlejohn on the tackle. John, obviously the game plan for the Jackrabbits is establish the run early and if they don't, that's going to be a problem for them. It's going to be trouble. Both teams, when you talk about the keys to this football game, is first down, I think. And, you know, you pick up good yardage and put yourself in manageable situations right now. South Dakota State does not want to have to throw the football, especially with this noise in this place. Ball is at the 26-yard line. On third down and long, and they pass and complete over the middle, but a great tackle in open field made by Dudzik, Christian Dudzik. And that tackle is going to stop South Dakota State from picking up a first down, three and out. Mission accomplished for the Bison on defense. And the Bison, great job that time. They matched up, played man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, gave us an indication on what they're not afraid to do, play man-to-man -man coverage against this South Dakota State offense. Ethan Sawyer punting. Ryan Smith is the deep return man standing at his 22 and he drifts back to catch it. And he gets swarmed by four different white jerseys. And so negative yardage on the return for the Bison. Ryan Smith with a punt return last year for a touchdown. Against South Dakota State. Here's Brock Jensen's numbers. Starting quarterback, the junior from Wapaka, Wisconsin. Second team, All Missouri Valley Football Conference. The crowd gets very quiet when the Bison go on offense and they throw on first down to Ryan Smith, who gets dropped right after the catch and does get back to the line of scrimmage. Here's impact players when. North Dakota State has the football as we take a look at the running back Sam O'Jury the junior one of the efficient and productive running backs Ross Shafrath is the linebacker from Hampton Iowa a senior who will have to keep a close eye on O'Jury today second down and 10 after no gate on first down another throwing opportunity Jensen goes high and they went way up to get it, but Smith cannot come down with it. Skyler Luxa on the coverage. That ball delivered a little bit high. Brock Jensen had his receiver open in the outside there, a little bit high, and 
Looked like Ryan Smith went up for it, kind of pulled his arms maybe down, thought he had an opportunity to catch that football. So the Bison come out with two passing plays. And here's their numbers on third down for conversions this year. A little bit better than 50%. Still third down and 10, and a flag flies. And a fumble on the play, but I think this ball... This play is going to get blown up before the fumble. A Southland officiating crew. I don't know. Seemed like North Dakota State may have gotten in that situation there. Brock Jensen may be taking his eye off, looking at the rush coming in, or they may have snapped it a little bit early once they saw him in the neutral zone right there but quarterback wasn't ready for the football but big break for them and opportunity to get in a third and manageable situation here the ball moves out to the 28 yard line it's third down and five another throw this one's complete far side to zach Ra, their leading receiver and that moves the change as the bison get the first down good throw to the outside there is the weak side back and Ross Shafrath out there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and delivers a strike, picks up the yardage, and that's what this Bison offense wants to do, just move the ball down the field. Right now, they're doing it through the pass a little bit. We thought maybe they'd come out, try to establish the run, but right now, going through the air. Rahm missed four games with a shoulder separation earlier this year, still has put up great numbers since he's come back. And the run with Ojuri, not getting much room to run with and they get maybe a yard on first down. As you watch this Bison offense, you're going to see O'Jury back there in the backfield and John Crockett, number 23. Both of these guys interchangeable, a lot alike at the running back position. Both guys effective and can do some different things. And one guy maybe a little bit more effective is blocking for the quarterback in a passing situation. And Sam O'Jury may be that guy. So second and long as the Bison crowd is quiet, and they get a good run up the middle. That's Ojuri again. A little bit more room for him. Shafrath on the tackle. Ross, a senior from Hampton, Iowa, had 14 solo tackles here in the Fargo Dome three weeks ago. We should reset, John, that these teams, again, playing in the same conference, have already played each other. And earlier, it was a 2017 win for North Dakota State. A hard-fought game. And it should be a lot more of the same today here. But again, the stakes are higher here in the FCS playoffs. Third and five. Passing for Brock Jensen, and it's complete near side. Ryan Smith, another North Dakota State first down. Well, hear his name an awful lot today. Ryan Smith, kind of a possession receiver, not a big guy, but get the ball close to him. He'll make a catch for you. He'll move the chains, and boy, if the Bison offense is going to be successful today through the air, Ryan Smith is going to be a big part of it. He only goes 5'7", 175 pounds, but they say he's one of the toughest players on this team. And the drive continues into Jack Rabbit's territory. Jensen's got a lot of time and a deep ball overthrow. Intended for Ryan Smith again. I really like the play call there. First down, opportunity to go up top, play action, and you'll see the spice in offense a lot of times today go back to that play action. They scored a touchdown in that first game off of that same play fake to this near side of the field. That time they went to the wide receiver to the high side. Jeremiah Butler was deep on the coverage there in the secondary for the Jacks. This is second and ten. The first offensive series for North Dakota State. A delayed run, and this is O'Jury to about the 43-yard line. Good play call here. Draw play, try to set up a third down situation here, and you don't want to have to be in third and long, especially with this Jack Rabbit's defense coming in this year. 32 sacks on the year. They know how to get back to the quarterback. So if you can get in that 
Good third down situation here makes it a little bit easier for that big guys up front. Another third down opportunity here for the Bison. A chance to get the first points here in this FCS second round playoff game. Jensen's got to improvise and he gets almost to the first down marker. Looks like he's about a yard short though. Jensen, not a guy that looks to take off with the football an awful lot. They actually had more play design for him when they met the first time this year. Get him the football in his hand. He had a long run of 56 yards in that football game. And now put him in a situation where this Bison offense is going to go for it. Say the ball's at the 39-yard line. They've got a, about exactly one yard to get. And a quarterback keep and a push ahead from Brock Jensen. Just a little bit of misdirection enough to open that hole up and another first down pickup. Well, Brent Vegan designed a nice one there. I don't think I've ever seen that actually designed from a quarterback. You see a quarterback draw. That was one step. Looked like you're going to go back and hand the football off and kind of a delayed quarterback draw and a great play call. So they keep moving closer to the red zone at the 36. They've mixed passing and running in this first drive. And now a toss here to Vra on the near side. And he completes it. But a tackle right after the catch. They get they get just one yard on that reception though. Yeah Winston right you take a look at him right there. He's their best cornerback. They always try to play him to the near or boundary corner. He gets involved in the run game an awful lot. He's a great tackler and you'll see him in the backfield. He'll they'll crash him from that cornerback position. Second down and nine here. Like there's a mute switch on this crowd. They get so quiet when the Bison have the ball. This is Ojiri up the middle, still pushing just outside the first down marker, inside the 30 yard line. Tackle by Shafrith again, but he gets into that linebacking group and gets positive yardage. You see him here run with his eyes a little bit, keep the legs turning, but you're absolutely right about this crowd. It's amazing on offense, this crowd sits down. When they're on defense, everybody's standing up in this place, but very intelligent fans here. They know how to work this work this stadium, and this is a great place for football. Third and two. Ojuri almost gets tripped in the backfield, still pushing, and he is right at the first down marker. Just outside of the 26. Well, watch the penetration by Hedegaard here as he gets inside. Penetration normally hurts that run game, but made a miss there and picked up a key first down for them. But boy, he was off the ball quick that time in Hedegaard. So a methodical opening series drive for North Dakota State. Play fake to Ojuri. Jensen on the run, incomplete. The comeback route run by Nate Moody. TJ Lally on the coverage there. So, Rock Jensen, and talking to the coaches this week, John, the Bison passing game has not been producing especially well lately. I'm sure they want to get his confidence back up a little bit. So, they can get some balance in that on their offense. Yeah, and sometimes doing that of the short throws that he's had during this drive to start it off. That time they had a tight end coming across off a bootleg, and that was the same play action that they scored the touchdown on. I think they'll come back to it. Again, they've won time of possession consistently. Here's a almost catch. Sam O'Jury bobbled it and then got popped, and it's incomplete. Well, no surprise, Ross Scherfath. Shafrath will we'll mention his name all day. This guy, 132 tackles, leads this football team, and he's been getting better every year. And this senior now just has all kinds of numbers, and you can see he's always around the football. 
This time this drive has burned off seven minutes and 20 seconds of our first quarter of football after South Dakota State went three and out. This is third and ten. All kinds of time and a deep ball in the end zone too high. Intended for Rob, but it had a lot of zip, but it was too high, and it's fourth and ten now for the Bison. Bo Helm was the deep cover man in the middle for the Rabbits. So Adam Keller will come in to attempt the 43-yard field goal. This is in his comfort zone. And it is no good. And the Bison come up empty on their opening possession. More for first quarter football when we come back. Earlier this year, it was the battle for the Dakota marker here at the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State, a field goal was the difference. But the numbers, John, Zach Zenner held way below his average, just 43 yards. Craig Bull told us yesterday, if they keep him under 100 yards today, they probably give them themselves a very good chance to win. Yeah, and you go back and you look at the other side of that, and you talk about the Jock Rabbits, and we talked to their coaching staff. They felt like they didn't sustain blocks that they needed to to be able to help this offense run the football in that first game. A throw on first down complete on that far side, short of the 35-yard line, but Andre Martin makes the tackle, but it's Tyrell Cool, the leading wideout for the Jacks. Who hauls it in? And the mute button is now off yes. the crowd here at the Fargo Dome. Now that they're back on defense, very glad to be with you for the second round of the SCS playoffs. Cool, a former running back who is now producing at wide receiver, second down and three. Another passing opportunity. Here's a deep throw by Sumner, and it is caught by Brandon Hubert. What a catch in stride inside the 15 yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by Bobby Ullman. What an arm and what a completion. Big completion down the field. Plenty of time to throw the football. He gets it out. A little push at the end of this. Got some separation for Hubert. He comes down with a big catch and it's Jack Rabbit offense now in the red zone. Hubert, the junior from Gretna, Nebraska. Comes up with the first big play. Ball is at the 17-yard line. And they hand off on first down, and Zenner's going to get swarmed under. Danny Lukey, the junior from right here in Fargo, makes the stop. Well, a good way to get your running game online is to 
throw up a long ball in your passing game. Yeah, what what it'll do? It'll back the defense up a little bit, but they came right back trying to run the football against a stout North Dakota State defense there, and they're just not giving up anything on the ground early in this football game. Second down and ten. A comfortable throw by Sumner, and it is incomplete. Andre Martin covering there. And third down and ten. So we know what's on the table here for these two teams. South Dakota State trying to go deeper in the FCS playoffs than they ever have if they can win today. North Dakota State looking for back to back FCS championships, but that means they've got to beat the Jackrabbits today. Third and ten. Sumner's going to throw. And he will complete it far side. Tough catch there as they go to the tight end. Seth Daughters, their leading receiver at tight end, makes a big play on third down, but he is just short of a first down. Well, we talked about running backs picking up blocks there. Zach Zenner, the tailback, does a nice job. Watch him step up here. Blitzing linebacker coming in. He picks it up. Allows Austin Sumner to deliver a strike to the outside, but key block by the running back. So Justin Cyril Vodka will come on for the field goal attempt, a 34 yarder. And he hammers it home, no doubt about it. And the Jackrabbits get the first points here in the Fargo Dome. The big touchdown, the big catch here from Brandon Hubert sets up the field goal. We're coming back with more after this. here at Fargo, North Dakota. As we take a look at the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, 200 miles south of Fargo in Brookings, South Dakota. And again, they are trying to make some hay and spring a road upset. And some of their faithful here, only about 500 tickets allotted for them out of the 18,000 plus other seats here at the Fargo Dome. So those uh, faithful fans able to Try to make a little bit of noise for the guys in blue and yeah, white. Yeah, and those tickets went pretty quick as well. I think they could have got a lot more in here had there been tickets for them. But as you can tell, it is a raucous crowd here filled with yellow and green and supporting Bison football as they take their first step in the FCS playoffs in this round two. And here's a Ryan Smith return. Tackled at about the 40, but flags are thrown. And on a good return, that usually means a illegal block of some sort. Oh, Dan, you know, when it comes down, you look at the last ball game, 20 to 17. It's going to come down to special teams. Holding number nine of the receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty. First down, North Dakota State. 
come down to special teams and turnovers in this football game and you can't make those mistakes you get a big play like that set your offense up every points and every single yards important in this football game and here's the bison of North Dakota State again in the Missouri Valley Football Conference along with the Jack Rabbits a little bit more of a prodigious resume in terms of FCS playoff appearances and again they hope that uh, they're moving right into the championship game again in January so it's first and ten at the twenty five for the Bison as they go back to work on offense and O'Jury is going to get a little bit of room to run a nice move sorry that's John Crockett the sophomore who again numbers wise is almost as productive as Sam O'Jury and he got creative there on that one John yeah, watch the fullback up front here just gets a body in the way Andrew Grothman gets in there not going to touch the football or run it very much but he's going to open up some holes for people and he's a guy at 234 pounds just kind of getting in the way that time not a big block but enough to open it up for Crockett Crockett hurdled his teammate Taylor Nelson there showing a little bit of athleticism and a first down get at the 36 and they run and they run big time this is Crockett again he's got two men to beat and he stops and stays in bounds finally forced out at the 25 talk about a one two punch John Crockett making a big statement early in the running game for the Bison. Now he talked about the balance of O'Jury and Crockett. O'Jury 159 attempts coming into the game, 152 for Crockett. So both guys get their hands on the ball an awful lot for this football team. But right now, Crockett's the guy that's put a little life into this offense. So they move that football to the 27 yard line. Boy, the first drive for North Dakota State. Slow and easy. This drive is taken off like a jet. And they will run the other way. This is Ra trying to get the edge. He stays in bounds and now he's pushed out inside the 20. The end around for the sophomore from Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. We talked to co coaches here and Jensen gets a good block. Watch the quarterback here get to the outside. Cuts somebody and allows him to pick up about five more. But they said they'd like to get Ra more involved in this offense, and that's a good way to get him involved. Ra, the former Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota, has excellent hand eye coordination so they can trust him on those trick plays. Ball is at the 20. Second down and three. And they will throw underneath here to Nate Moody. Who gets dragged down inside the 15. Moody getting a look at wide receiver Trevor Gebhardt. Wide receiver for him has some hamstring problems, so Moody in there getting a shot at the outside. Another good, possession type throw. Good, good concentration on that ball, too. You saw him watch it all the way in. Sometimes guys want to run before they get the ball in their hands but he was patient and it gets him a first down to the 14 yard line the long count Jensen's going to keep and he'll get maybe one or two well, we mentioned Jensen not a guy that runs the football a whole lot but in that first matchup there were some plays that they designed for Jensen and had some success broke off that one big run that we talked about but uh, you know that design was a little bit different coming into that first game that they played against him and kind of surprised this South Dakota State defense and that's going to wrap up our first quarter of football here at the Fargo Dome it's second round FCS playoff action South Dakota State a three nothing lead when we come back to Fargo.
This is how the regular season wrapped up in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. The Jack Rabbits and the Bison running neck and neck. And North Dakota State's win in their head-to-head -head meeting was the difference between first place and a tie. So, again, that was a kind of a defensive battle, and we've seen that this game could likely go that way. Jack Rabbits with the first quarter field goal as we move into the second quarter Bison football. Some big plays on this drive, and they are second and eight. And Jensen will throw it in the end zone, wide open. Complete for a touchdown. Garrett Brood is the receiver in the end zone, and the Bison get a big score to take the lead. Well, yeah, play action fake, and they brought the wide receiver in almost like they were going to run a bubble type screen. Really opened it up, pulled the cornerback out of there, had one on one coverage, and easy touchdown throw for the quarterback. Brood missed the last five games with a high ankle sprain. And he is not very high up on the depth chart for South North Dakota State. But he gets them their first score here. They lead at the Fargo Dome. NCAA.com slash shop has all the hottest officially licensed 2012 championship merchandise. With over 100,000 items for over 500 college teams, everything you need is in one location. You'll get 365-day hassle-free returns, great customer service, and $4.99 three-day shipping on any size order. Remember, for all your college gear, head to NCAA.com slash shop. Garrett Brune with the touchdown catch from 12 yards out. And North Dakota State's fans got a little bit more to cheer about here now with their first lead on the very first play of the second quarter. And the uphill battle now begins for the Jacks. Playing from behind now and for the first time in this game. Dom Wright, one of the return men, along with Wright, who will take this. Nope. Caught at about the 15-yard line in a pretty good return. Good hustle there for South Dakota State. Jimmy Forsythe on that return. 
And now the challenge really starts, John, because playing from behind in this environment a little different than playing with a lead. And one of the things you just have to do is maintain your composure in this situation here. You don't want to turn the football over. This crowd's going to be into it after scoring. So, you know, maintain the composure. Don't make that mistake. Don't let this crowd get you to jump off sides and do some do some things you shouldn't do offensively. And Zach Jenner only has three yards rushing on three carries. Sumner will hand to him, and here's an explosion run up the middle, and he pushes the pile and gets a Jack Rabbit's first down. Grant Olson on the stop, but Zenner really blew into that hole with a lot of speed. Well, you said just three yards coming into this carry here. Again, look at the blocking up front, do a nice job, kind of collapsing that right side there, and Zenner picking it up. And you know, we talked about the deceptiveness of his speed. He has not been caught when you talk to the coaching staff for. This Bison defense, they said, boy, he gets in the open. It's tough to get a hold of him or catch him. 12 yards on the run for the first down for the Jacks. And they go to him again. This time he is hammered in the backfield. Grant Olson is there again, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, Olson, he's the guy that's the leader of this defense, their middle linebacker. Said he's kind of that quarterback, that guy that'll just hit the hole in a hurry. Get there in the backfield. They say he lost a yard. So it's second down and 11. A sold out crowd here at the Fargo Dome. Hoping this is the first step towards another championship. There's the loud meter on the field. Very loud here in the Fargo Dome. Little swing pass, and it is caught near side. And forced out after Zenner hauled it in. Bobby Oldman on the tackle. Nice throw by Sumner. You can see him get it right out in front of Zenner. A guy that's not afraid to catch the ball out of the backfield. 27 catches coming into the football game. So they get him out to the outside. That's where they like to throw that ball to him. Get him to the outside quickly. Almost an extension to that running game. So it's a first down get ball just outside the 45 yard line. For the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State, Zenner gets another touch and there is no hole for him to run into. Andre Martin gets the tackle, but that's really the Bison defensive line that should get credit for that stop. Yeah, they've been playing well outside of giving up that one 10 yard run to him. They've been able to stuff the run and credit that defensive front when you talk about size that they have. You can see the size of those big bodies up front, and this South Dakota State offensive line have not been able to move them off the football. Second down and 10. Big time pressure on Sumner, but he's going to run and avoid contact and get back to the line of scrimmage. Craig Bull was pretty vocal about something down there trying to talk to the officials. Grant Olson that time linebacker came in from the right side and Sumner made a nice move of spinning out to be able to pick up some yardage there. But again Grant Olson 11 tackles for loss on the year. He likes to play in that backfield. We showed you that loud meter on the field a couple of plays ago to put that in perspective that if you're standing next to a running snowmobile with that engine revved, it's going to be loud and you bet this crowd will turn it up another notch now on third down and nine. Sumner's going to run, and he gets hit in the open field. Travis Beck makes the hit that keeps him from getting closer to that first down marker, but it is a good pickup. But they're about two yards short. And they're going to leave their offense on the field. It's pretty far out for a field goal attempt. And John Stiglmeyer says, you know what? Let's see what happens here on this fourth down and two from the 37. They fake and the pressure comes and Sumner goes down. Cole Jurek, the junior from Northfield, Minnesota, kills that drive. North Dakota State with the football when we come back to Fargo.
the Bison step up with that fourth down stop. And now their offense gets back to work here in Fargo. The 2012 NCAA Division I football championship continues next weekend. The quarterfinals on December 8th. All games on ESPN3. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. After the sack, here's a long ball deep and too far. Jensen was looking long for Andrew Oakland. I'm sorry, that's Zach Robb, the deep receiver on that route. And again, the quarterback confidence has to be addressed by Craig Bull. The play from, from Sumner the last few weeks has not been what they've needed. And they certainly want to get him confident as, they, as this game continues. And he'll get that, and he started off very well. A few short passes that time. I still like the offensive play. Trying to go deep, back this defense up, give them an opportunity to do this, and that's run the football. And O'Jury's the runner on this play, and he pushes inside to Jack Rabbit's territory to about the 47. So far, the offensive line for this North Dakota State offense doing a good job protecting their quarterback. Both teams last game had four sacks on the day and right now this offensive front doing a good job giving his quarterback time to even throw the ball deep down the field off of play action five yard run brings up third down and five as you look at Jensen in the passing game for North Dakota State time to throw and he completes far side that's block tackle made by Shafrath and it's a first down get for the Bison as they move to the 41-yard line. This Bison offense doing so many different things as far as formations go. Two tight ends, three tight ends. That time they go with five wide receivers. Spread them out, get some one-on-one -on -one coverage and an easy throw to the outside by Vra getting out there. Good hands. Here's O'Jury. Some blockers, but a good angle tackle. David Henniger is the run stopper there, but some positive yardage, a gain of two. Henniger, interesting story. You know, they were looking for defensive linemen. He raised his hand and said, I'll do it. A guy that didn't even play football, he went to junior college, no football, and then he comes here, and he's just developed into a very aggressive defensive player. Got to love that can-do attitude. And there's his numbers on the season. Good ones. Defensively for South Dakota State. This is second down and eight. And a long time under center for Jensen, but he's going to throw a nice comeback route and a catch by Ryan Smith. Very close to that first down marker, about a yard short. Well, we talk about patience with running backs, waiting for that hold to develop that time. Brock Jensen. Wanted to get rid of that quick football pretty quickly. You can see him kind of hold on to it here. Wants to get rid of it. Well, now I'll do it. I get my, I see the whites of my receiver's eyes, and I'm going to find him out there. And waited for Ryan Smith to turn around and another strike to the outside. David Godley forced him out. Four, six on third downs. Here's some misdirection. And a touchdown as the Bison score a big-time touchdown with Ryan Smith. They catch him off guard. The great opportunity and the touchdown, 32 yards. So the misdirection works big time for the Bison. Watch him, he's hiding behind the left guard here. Kind of the fumble ruski. We talked with the coaches, they said they're not gonna do anything different during the week or anything or come out with anything new, but if North Dakota State's doing that all year, that's pretty successful. What a great play design and a perfect time to run it in your first third and short situation down in South Dakota State's defense. So the Bison pull one out of their hat and they build on their lead here at the Fargo Dome against the Jackrabbits.
deception at the Fargo Dome helps the Bison push that lead to 14 to 3. And the rushing yards tell a huge part of this story, John. 122 yards on the ground for the Bison. The Jackrabbits only have 13. And going into this game, you don't think that that's going to be the factor. You would think maybe it was the other way around. But again, this South Dakota, North Dakota State defensive front has been just tremendous against the run so far in this first half. A deep kick, and it's going to come out of the end zone. South Dakota State, Dom White with a decent return, but he gets popped and denied at about the 20 yard line. Kyle Emanuel makes the tackle, and here's the last drive with Sumner on the run. And here's the sack that ended the drive on fourth down. And here's the new look fumble Ruski run by the Bison, the 32-yard score, and giving this crowd here at the Fargo Dome a little bit more to get loud about. Time for Sumner on first down, but he fires it out of bounds, incomplete. And a flag thrown in the North Dakota State Bison secondary. And at this point, John, I, the question for you is, is the game plan out the window for the Jackrabbits because trailing by 11 points, it's pretty hard to lean on your running game. Yeah, but I absolutely don't think it's out. You know, he's still a lot of time to play in this football game. You know, you keep pounding him. He was Zach. After the play, personal foul on the offense, number 77. Finley is half the distance to the goal. Second down. Going back to that, you know, those are the mistakes you don't want to make right there. You're going to find yourself on the sideline. You have to stay with the confidence that uh, you, you can score and you've been successful all year, but you can't have those mistakes right there. That's what puts you off off schedule right there. And the loud meter goes up again here. It is second down and 19, and they will throw and they will complete their side to Rollin, who gets a pretty good chunk of yardage back for the Jacks. Bobby Ullman on the stop. Andrew Mueller was the instigator on that penalty that went against South Dakota State. Yeah, and you said made a tackle to the outside. Bobby Ullman did. Had he not made that tackle, it could have been a long game for South Dakota State. This is third down and six. The Jacks have not converted on third down yet today. Time for Sumner, a deep throw, and it is intercepted. Just a little bit short. Marcus Williams hauls it in, and the Bison get the football back on the turnover. Now Marcus Williams, dressed 16th interception now, has tied the school record with that 16th interception. A guy that's certainly an NFL guy. Everybody loves, best cover guy. And just watch him. To the outside, he's got him locked in. Tried to force this throw in here, and that's what starts to happen when you drop behind and against this North Dakota State defense. You start to panic a little bit, just throwing the guys you shouldn't. And again, Williams, a great look at his athletic ability. That was kind of an easy pick for him. However, look at how tight he was on Tyrell Cool. He was with him step for step. Yeah, and you look at those numbers, 16 interceptions. He's there's a guy that they don't throw against very often. So they don't, you know, teams don't focus on throwing the football in his direction. So those 16 interceptions are even better than what you would think. And a handoff on first down. This is Crockett exploding inside the 40 yard line and the Bison. Keep on pounding away. Skyler Luxa on the tackle, but. North Dakota State gave up that field goal in the first quarter. They didn't come out guns blazing per se, but everything's starting to shift momentum wise on the North Dakota sideline now. And look at the rushing numbers. And it seemed like it happened when John Crockett broke off that long run last time he was in this game. When they inserted him, it was kind of a little bit of a life to this offense. 
Time for Jensen and a throw deep and well out of the foot near reach of Brian Smith. But a late flag right near where the ball was going. David Godley was the cover man on Ryan Smith. I mentioned Hediger getting to the quarterback, finding a way and holding defense number 21. It's a 10 yard penalty with an automatic first down. And Crockett now has 63 yards rushing. And this balanced offense of North Dakota State really trying to open things up now. They've got South Dakota State backing up a bit here, so they're being pretty aggressive as they go after this defense. So it's first and ten. And when it's quiet, you know the Bison have the football. This is O'Jury, and he'll try to get outside after the holes not available, but he gets hammered from behind by Marshall Pugh. So no gain on first down. And if you're John Stiglmeyer right now, John, you're probably just hoping that your defense can make a stop here. And, and kind of make a statement and keep that point differential from improving. Absolutely. If you can at least hold them to a field goal here, it may be a win situation and get everybody calmed down and find a way to get in at halftime. Crockett kind of lost his footing. John Crockett. And that play turns into nothing for the Bison. Crockett, interesting guy, hasn't played football since 2009. Some academic problems, and this is his first year playing, and boy, he's really developed, and as the year has gone on, he's gotten better and better. You don't play for two years, it makes an awful lot. It's that rust on you. You're able to knock that rust off, and he's really showing tonight that he doesn't have any uh, rust left on him. Third and nine, the Bison are five of seven on third downs so far in this game. Jensen's got a little bit of time in the pass to Crockett. Room to go inside the 15. And a first down get for North Dakota State. Another great play call. Watch the running back here. Looks like he's going to chip on the defensive end, Pew, and he doesn't. He lets him go right by. Kind of an old Mouse Davis run and shoot type play where you just kind of hit the linebacker, hit the defensive end, and turn and look for the football. Great play design. Nice, quick, easy throw for a quarterback. First to 10 at the Jack Rabbits 14-yard line. Some new looks in the Bison playbook. And this is Crockett again, a good push in the front to give him room to run, and they get inside the 10-yard line. And again, the one-two combination of O'Jury and Crockett coming into this game. That is tremendous balance. When you can roll two different running backs in and out, John, what an advantage for your offense. Yeah, and the amazing thing, 159 attempts from O'Jury for O'Jury and 152 attempts for Crockett. So it doesn't get much better than that as far as balance goes. So it's second down and six, ball at the 10-yard line. Jensen's going to keep it. He's going to get stopped big time. That was Chase Douglas who put it into that play very quickly for the Jackrabbits. Douglas had a tremendous game the first time they played. Had two and a half sacks in that game. He was very active getting into the backfield. And talented guy. Not a guy listed in the starting position, but boy, in that game against North Dakota State last time, it had a very successful night. That's a two yard loss and it brings up third down and eight. The winner is moving into the FCS playoff quarterfinals next weekend. Look at that time and a throw in the middle. Ryan Smith down at the two yard line. Maybe the one. Uh, you mentioned Ryan Smith's size at 5'7", 175. You can't be afraid to go across the middle and catch the football. He led this Bison offense with 36 receptions coming into the game, and I imagine a lot of them have been across the, right across the football. 
in the center of the field. And boy, he's a tough physical player at just 5'7. Yeah, they say he wants to catch the ball over the middle. He is a very aggressive player. First and goal at the two. It's a keep and an easy touchdown run for Ron Jensen. Take a look at the quarterback here. You know, that's a couple times now we've seen misdirection. At one time it was a quarterback sneak. This time it looks a, like a play design as you can see them pulling their guard around. Getting the block there, but I think there's such active linebackers on this South Dakota State team. When he takes that first step away from center, he gets those linebackers moving, and misdirection's been so successful for him here in this first half. Rack up another touchdown for North Dakota State. Marcus Williams, the interception that sets up the score, and we'll have more FCS playoff football when we come back to Fargo. The Bison with a sizable lead here over the Jackrabbits late second quarter. ESPN College Football is live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and which with the Watch ESPN, ESPN app. Download it now. You have to work pretty hard to miss out on all the college football here on ESPN. And how about this return coming from Dom Wright? Who's able to push it out to about the 25 yard line? Tackle by Zach Colvin and a player down. Robbie Joe's Jelsma is the injured South Dakota State player. Well, now the pressure, John, shifts to the offense. For South Dakota State. You're surely not going to win a game like this with just field goals. Yeah. And they're they haven't been able to get really close to threatening to score a touchdown yet. No, and you asked me before the last series, you know, do things stuff to change offensively? Do you get out of your game plan? I didn't think it really had to before that last series, but with the bison going down and scoring again, you know, that may be a factor here. But the one thing again you don't want to do with 258 to go is you want to force something in your own territory down here and have this North Dakota State team go down and score again. So you have to protect the football. If something big here happens, if you can break something on a screen, some type of draw, or, you know, something to be effective to maybe put yourself in that situation, then you go down and try to score. But you certainly don't want to turn it over now in your own territory. So Gelsma comes off the field. 
And you know, we've been talking all week about the Jimmy V uh, cancer initiative. We found a great story here. Justin Gregg, the line judge there with the black cap on. A cancer survivor. He went through chemotherapy last summer, missed almost every game of last year except for two. And John, he had a cancer that you sadly have firsthand experience about. Yeah, and uh, you know, I didn't find that out. You told me the story about it. The squamous cell carcinoma actually had it in his throat. I had it in my right tonsil, so I know what he went through and his radiation and all of those type of things. So glad to see he's doing good. And his son Zane probably more happy than anybody else that uh, his dad is doing well. Sumner gets taken down by Cole Jurek. So again, we've shared a lot of great stories about cancer survivors and we wanted to certainly note that Justin Gregg was one of them. Glad to have him back working. This is second and 19 after the loss, and the ball is thrown short. Intended for Tyrell Cool, but again, more pressure on the South Dakota State passing game. And it is third and 19. The ball is at the 17 yard line. As South Dakota State offensive line has given up 40 sacks on the year, so. You wonder if they're going to use running backs. What are they going to do to pr help protect this quarterback? And now again, dangerous situation throwing the ball here in your territory late in the first half. Little short toss underneath. This is cool, but he is way short of the first down after the Travis Beck tackle. And the Bison will take a timeout here with Two minutes and 19 seconds left. And you can bet they are glad to get the football back with a chance to do a little bit more damage before halftime. And scores from other games around the FCS on this second round of play. They're going to overtime. Illinois State and Appalachian State. So nothing decided yet in that game. In this bracket, that these two teams are in. Wolford does advance with a win over New Hampshire 23 to 7. So Wolford has already punched their ticket to the quarterfinals next weekend. They will play the winner of this game. And again, Old Dominion, a, a sizable win there. So now the top seeds are in action this weekend. A very high snap almost over the head. But the punt is away, and Ryan Smith just lets it go. So a great boot by Ethan Sawyer for the Jacks. They win the field position battle there, but now the pressure shifts to their defense as we look at time of possession. So one-sided in favor of the Bison. Yeah, and you look at the Bison all year long. It's been lopsided to their side. They possess the ball as good as anybody in the country all year long when you look at those numbers and no surprise tonight especially when you look at the Russian yardage South Dakota State only four yards rushing on the day with the sacks and everything that they've taken so if you can't run the football and chew up that clock against this this uh, offense you're going to have some trouble so the ball at the 19 yard line for this bison offense that is picked up big time in the second quarter deep throw and a bad route run there was nobody within 10 yards of that football, so. Brock Jensen, we've seen a good arm, but we haven't seen too many long completions from him. No, and uh, that's probably the third one we, we've seen there. We don't know if the receiver was on a different route there, read something a little bit different, but again, if you're gonna make a mistake, make the mistake long, not make it short where somebody can pick it off. If you don't feel confident as a quarterback that you can stick it in there, just go ahead and overthrow it, and they've had some success after he hasn't completed those balls tonight. Second down and 10. Ojuri gets a touch and a good one. And it's beyond the 25-yard line. You see a different, a little bit different mentality out there on the football field. A bunch of white shirts walking around with their hands on their hips, and the Bison offense kind of moving a little bit quickly, but... South Dakota State's defense right now kind of scratching their heads a little bit, wondering what they need to do to stop this Bison offense. The Bison getting all of their points in this second quarter of football. 
First quarter was almost a stalemate with South Dakota State's field goal, the only points. This is third down and two. And they're going to throw. And the ball is tipped and almost intercepted. Boy, that could have been a game changer for the Jackrabbits. Doug Pete was the one who almost created something very big for a team that needed it. If you can't get to the quarterback here, he watched, looked at his eyes the whole way. North Dakota State has gone to that in the third and four or five situation, trying to pick up that first down. That was the third or fourth attempt at doing that, and you start to recognize it, and Pete did and got his hands up, and he was able to knock that down. Winston Wright was the one who almost got under it for an almost interception. Look at this punt, a pretty good one. And they have to drift back to catch it, and the Bison special teams unit stops him at the 35. Wesley on the return. And it's now the opportunity for the Jackrabbits. A minute and three seconds. How important for them on this drive, John? It's critical. Well, the, in minute three, they've got timeouts to work with this thing. They've got to find a way to get the ball down the field. You know, they've, they've had some success to the outside. It's not going to be play action here. You can expect them to throw it. So they have to find a way to protect this quarterback and maybe find some completions over the center of the field. They had one big 50 yard throw to Brandon Hubert that set up their field goal. And now the noise ratchets back up here inside the Fargo Dome. Ball at the 38. Here's a high ball. And it is incomplete. A little bit too much under it intended for Hubert. And you see South Dakota State that time putting three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. They have a matchup mark with Marcus Williams one on one to the short side of the field. But you really don't want to go there because he's such a great cover guy. You have to find a way to get it to the three receivers to the wide side of the field. And it, you're asking a quarterback to do an awful lot to throw that corner to the wide side. Just under one minute left in our first half of football. Quick throw underneath. This is complete. And Rollin on the reception, tackled by Grant Olson. Rollin, the senior from Lee Summit, Missouri, and it's hurry up offense time for the Jacks. Third and five. And oh, that ball is off the fingertips of Jason Schneider. Just about had it, but Marcus Williams was there on the cover. Brings up fourth and five. Clock stops with 34 seconds left. And I think with a better throw from the quarterback Sumner that time, that's a completion to the outside. Kind of a fade stop route out there. You had one-on-one -on -one coverage again by Williams, but that time a good throw to that back shoulder. I think it's completed. And the Jackrabbits 0 for 6 on third down chances in the first half. Very hard to win a football game South that Dakota way. State, they're first. So a timeout taken by the Jacks. And again, the crowd on defense. South Dakota State thinks that they kind of know how to manage it, but it's not 100%. No, and all week long, when we talk with these coaches, they, all week long, these teams have practiced and they put a lot of music. They pump music in there. They make it as distracting as they can in practice to get them to get used to the noise. But... You know, so far, outside of getting the center to snap it on time, they haven't had guys jump off sides, and they had that problem during the first matchup that they had this year. So fourth and five is the Jackrabbits will punt from their own 43. Ryan Smith, the return man, standing inside the 20. And there is a very, very nice punt off the toe of Ethan Sawyer, who is stepping up with some big kicks to help South Dakota State win the field position battle. So 27 seconds left. How risky do you get if you're North Dakota State here? I think you're, you're probably pretty conservative. You know, this is a conservative coach, I think, in some aspects, but 21-3 uh, lead. If you asked him if you would like that score right now, I think he'd take that into the locker room. Jensen will hand off to Crockett on first down. He misses one would-be tackler and keeps going. 
to just about the 26 yard line and that will effectively put an end to our first half of football here in Fargo, North Dakota. And is this crowd fired up? A great second quarter for the Bison as Craig Bull will have some good things to talk about in the Bison locker room. Halftime when we come back to the Fargo Dome. The Bison leading 21 to 3 here over South Dakota State in the second round of the FCS playoffs. A halftime lead here for the Bison of North Dakota State over South Dakota State here at the Fargo Dome. We welcome you back inside, Dan Gatowski, along with John Gregory. And John, we understood the game plan from the beginning for North Dakota State. Stop that running back for the Jackrabbits. And so far, mission accomplished for the home team. Yeah, this Bison defense has done a great job up front. They've really, you know, not allowed him to get anything. Just four yards on the name rushing for the South Dakota State offense. And yellow shirts all up front. And that defensive front has done a great job of preventing him from getting anything whether it's right left he hasn't had the room to pick up anything he's had one yard run rush over 10 yards everything else has been bottled up there's a look at where he's run the football today one attempt to the left side no yards it doesn't matter where it is four up to center for 13 but uh, Zach Zenner has just not been effective at all just 15 yards two and a half yards per attempt and Zach's second meeting against this bison defense going about as well as the first one did center's been able to put up big numbers but when it's against the bison they have figured out ways to slow him down the earlier game between these two teams this year a 20 to 17 home win for north dakota state yep the bison already have 21 points in this game so a big uphill battle is looming for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, that graphic basically says it all right there. In addition to that, you look at the first half of this football game on third downs. South Dakota State 0 for 6 on the day. North Dakota State 7 of 10. When you get those numbers, you can see why the score is 21 to 3 right now in favor of the Bison. And the Bison won the coin toss. They deferred, so their second half will begin with their offense on the field. A strong kick caught inside the five, but a head of steam for Ryan Smith, who returns it outside the 30. So our FCS playoffs continue with second round action. The first game of the FCS playoffs for the home team, the number one seeded North Dakota State Bison, who are Again, playing to get back to the championship game that they won in January when they beat Sam Houston State. And we said that the fundamentals for this team, John, are about playing at a high level on defense. Last year, Sam Houston State, one of the most prolific offenses in all of the FCS, they were held to just six points in that championship game. And here's a run wide for O'Jury on first down. And you, you know, I know they're on offense right now, but the big story is their defense and how they buckle, you know, get everybody. They lead the nation in passing defense, rushing defense, third down. So the success they have not, you know, this South Dakota State team knew what they were getting involved with when they had this, but uh, they've just been exceptional tonight. As we mentioned, Sam Houston State, there's the update on their game against Cal Poly, halftime there. So. We'll keep tabs on that game as it continues. Two field goals and a safety in that contest. And this is second and 12, but a keep at quarterback for Jensen, who gets put down by Winston Wright. And an injured Bison player on the field as we replay this. And that's Tyler Gimistad, the junior from Marshall. 
6 2 298 pounds and the training staff will help him off and he moves off slowly Andrew Knack the junior is behind him on the depth chart I'll take a look at the middle of the screen maybe you can see some here he originally gets hit looks maybe almost looked like a thigh type of injury the way he was walking off there and pointing while he was down on the field so hopefully he'll be back in this football game third and 12 from the 30 yard line Jensen's going to throw underneath here short side to O'Jury who stays up and gets a first down good speed after the catch he gets it just by about half a yard well, the good thing about it, when you have two running backs, Crockett may have been the first half guy that came in and sparked him. Ojuri, when you get in there at the halftime, you say, hey, give me a shot here in the second half, and he'll get that shot. Well, it was very close to a first down. The officials move the ball back. It brings up fourth down and one, so the punting unit comes on. Trevor Wesley, the return man. Waiting for this punt, and it is a boomer. And Wesley has to let it go, and it takes an almost bison friendly bounce, but it goes into the end zone. End zone. So Ben LeCompte put a lot of leg into that kick. And now here's the pressure on the South Dakota State offense. Obviously, Zach Zenner's. Touches and numbers have to improve. They didn't throw to him very much, and the rushing obviously is a, a big drop off from what they need. Yeah, and remember, he had 295 yards rushing last week, and I think more important than anything else, you looked at the time of possession. North Dakota State had it for 19 19 in the first half versus 10 41. So sit. South Dakota somehow needs to South Dakota State somehow needs to keep their offense on the field and let that defense rest a bit. Zenner gets a big push on first down as he runs wide. And that's a first down. Travis Beck able to force him out, but some flashy running here for Zenner. Now first opportunity for him maybe to bounce it outside here. One on one tackle. It's missed here. You do that. Here's some of the speed. You can see him up the sideline. That's the first breath of life that Zenner's been able to see outside of that middle of the football field. That's a 17 yard get on first down. And the crowd is still a factor here. A little bit of a delay. Zenner gets it and gets popped. Stays on his feet but. Boy that good hit kept him from. Making that more than it was Grant Olson and Carlton Littlejohn. Both get in on that tackle. Well, Grant Olson doesn't look like the biggest guy in the middle of that football field. Listed at 223 pounds, had 15 tackles against Indiana State. He'll get involved in a run game in a hurry. Second and nine after a one yard gain. Center again, tripped up in the backfield. Bobby Ullman. Oman that time strong safety blitzing from the outside they're able to get his arm on the running back and bring him down and here's a look at that bison defense we mentioned him total defense first in the country well just go down the list first everywhere that says it all took a lot of time to build that graphic <laughs> and it is third and nine for South Dakota State they'll throw underneath far side a completion but well short of that first down they hook up with Aaron Rollin but Bobby Ullman stops it and the rabbits the Jackrabbits will have to punt I think it was a good play call for South Dakota State that time they had the blitz coverage coming in that time and he needed to get rid of it quick he got it to the outside and you you know as a wide receiver out there you've got to be able to make one guy miss if you expect to pick up that first down Another beautiful punt by Sawyer. And let's see if it gets the end zone. It does. No return. Early third quarter football here at the Fargo Dome. The home crowd is yelling and screaming. The Bison lead by 18 points.
North Dakota State got all their offense in the second quarter as they lead here over the Jackrabbits. Kansas State's fantastic regular season comes to a close with a must-win finale in Manhattan as Colin Klein and the Wildcats look to secure that Big 12 title and the automatic BCS bid against Case McCoy and the Longhorns. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8. 18th ranked Texas against Kansas State tonight at 8 on ABC. This is Crockett on first and 10, getting wide. And forced out of bounds. Sam O'Jury was the premier back early, but uh, once Crockett got in that game, John, the offense seemed to really kind of take off for North Dakota State. Yeah, and all it takes is one big first down, and as soon as Crockett got in there, he was able to bounce one out to the right side. Pick up some big yardage, and then it seemed like that Bison offense got that composure and that confidence. Once they get that rolling, that's very tough to stop. There's the time of possession battle favoring North Dakota State on second down and five from the 25. There's a push inside, but Crockett can't escape the gang tackle there. Shafrith. Helping for the Jacks. Brings up third down and two. If you can't keep your offense on the field, your South Dakota State, it becomes so problematic. Quarterback keep, first down, no problem for Brock Jensen. They've used him very effectively in that little quarterback delay and then sneak. Yeah, again, I, you know, I've never seen this play actually designed that way prior to this football game, but, you know, offenses are copycats out there. I venture to say if teams are watching this, they're going to start looking at the same thing and doing it. Jetson now six carries for 17 yards. And North Dakota State's going to take a timeout here. So the Missouri Valley Football Conference has had a lot of great players that we've seen throughout the season, John. How about the offensive player of the year? Matt Brown, look at those numbers that he racked up. Well, 20 touchdown passes and six rushing. You know, you it's not always about the yards. It's not always about the touchdown passes. How do you lead your team? And he's certainly a leader. And Marcus Williams here today. Marcus Williams, the interception that got this crowd revved up. And again, uh, a dominant performance by him. And Sawyer from Northern Iowa. The freshman player of the year. What can you say about his season? Well, again, it, it all comes down to numbers. You know, you don't get the opportunity all the time to see these these players. Uh, that so you have to look at numbers, and they're just you got to trust in them that these guys are leaders of the football team. Again, Williams, you know the numbers for him aren't as flashy because. The quarterbacks and the offensive coordinators know not to challenge him. Yeah, kind of like the old Deion Sanders. You know, they just keep it away. Don't throw to his direction. But he has 16 career interceptions after the one he got today. And here's Jensen just kind of trying to create something out of nothing, and it turns into nothing. Yeah, it turned into a two, three yard loss that time, and Jensen probably. If he had it to do over again, had the opportunity to throw that ball out of bounds and, you know, not take that sack in that situation there. And again, it's the little things. And I told you about this coach, how he talks about the principles of football. That's the little things that Coach Bowl wants out of everybody and expects it from everybody. And Jensen, that time, he'll talk to him about throwing that ball away next time. Well, the best thing he did, though, was stay in bounds, keep the clock going. So it's second down and 13. A long count and a handoff to Crockett. And that doesn't turn into anything. Doug Pete. And we're inside eight minutes of third quarter football left. And 
the impetus bottom line is going to be on the South Dakota State Jackrabbit offense to get the football back and start getting that ball in the end zone yeah, they, they've got to find a way to move the ball through the air they haven't had the success on the ground and as the time continues to chew up here in the third quarter they've got to somehow find something that will spark that offense third and 12. Bison have had a lot of success today on third down pressure and Jensen will throw in off balance that's incomplete looking for Derek Lang out of the backfield so it is punting time for the Bison and Trevor Wesley will go deep to his own 25. And another boomer punt from Ben LeCompte, and it's no return. And the Jackrabbits on football, on offense, when we come back to the Fargo Dome. Sumner trying to get this game back in line for South Dakota State. Welcome back to Fargo as the second round of the FCS playoffs continue. These teams very familiar with each other. They're in the same conference, so they play each other every year. North Dakota State, a winner in their head-to-head -head meeting just a few weeks ago. And things are looking good right now for the Bison as they go on defense here. Ball at the 19-yard line. And a little misdirection, a lot of time for Sumner to throw, and he completes to the 37-yard line. Tyrell Cool on the catch, Christian Dudzik on the big hit, but a first down get for the Jackrabbits. And the guy Cool is the, is the one receiver on this football team. You mentioned it before, he was the leading rusher last year. He's kind of a multi-dimensional guy that, you know, leading rusher last year. They expected him to play running back until Zenner popped up and now they're able to use him as a wide receiver out there but he's the guy offensively I think from a wide receiver standpoint that has to open things up for the South Dakota State offense. They go back to Zenner who shakes a couple of tackles and then gets close to the 45 Travis Beck on the stop. And you want to get a running game going you know get a passing game going and it works the other way too. you, you know you want to have a passing game. Get some play action going after successful running, but they may have to take that route of, you know, pass first and then open up the run. When this Bison defense is on the field, it gets very loud. You can see that this crowd is energized as the noise meter is right there on the field for second and four. Here's Zetter, a good burst of speed, a high tackle, but it's a first down. Travis Beck on the tackle. A great hard run by Zach Zetter. Got enough for the first down. You mentioned a high tackle by Beck and 
Beck's kind of that wild card on this defense. He's asked to do an awful lot. He'll cover guys in the slot. He's probably the best guy that they have to cover slot guys out there. But, you know, doing that, he still has to be a part of the run. Zenner trying to get the offense some points on this drive on first and ten. And he crashes ahead for not much. Cole Jurek helping on the tackle. They get just enough to get into bikes and territory. We see John Stiglmeyer with a team that is a run heavy on offense because of Zach Zenner, but running against the Bison is a tough way to succeed here in the Fargo Dome. Second and seven. And before that play develops, it's all coming back after the flag is thrown at the line. Right, for the snap. Ball start offense. Number 66. It's a five yard penalty. The replay second down. It's on Trevor Gager. Rager. Sophomore. And that's, that's the first time we've seen that today. We've talked a lot about the crowd noise, but that's the first time we've seen any type of procedure penalty. And they've been pretty composed and not jumping in that situation after having about four or five in the first football game they played this game, this year here. That's the handoff to Reggie Gandy who gets backed up and bottled up by Bobby Ullman. Gandy the freshman from Minneapolis. Bobby Ullman doing a nice job of timing it up when he comes from that strong safety position. He's not there at the line of scrimmage pre-snap, but he shows up just at the right time, and he's unaccounted for, not able to block. He's able to get into the backfield and, again, make a stop behind the line of scrimmage from a strong safety position. The noise meter heads north again on third and 13 at the 45. Summers got time, and a throw on the run complete. To the tight end Seth Daughters, but Daughters can't stay in bounds, and he's short of that first down. Andre Martin put him out of bounds. Boy, and Martin put him out with some attitude that time as he was coming across. There was no way he was going to pick up that first down. He actually pushed him into the end, almost into the stands here. You can see him a little shove there. Not a whole, a whole lot of room between the sidelines and the stands. So Ryan Smith is standing at his own 10. Low snap on the punt. They got close. Smith lets it go and it takes a Jack Rabbit friendly bounce down to about the five. North Dakota State State with 21 second quarter points. We're back in a moment. This telecast is copyrighted by the NCAA for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any picture, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NCAA's consent is prohibited. 
So the fans at the Fargo Dome with some well spent, uh, some a good, <laughs> a good, a good sign they put together there. Taking a little dig at the, the running back for South Dakota State. They start on offense, and this is Ojuri on first down to almost the 13-yard line. As we do kind of a reset on this game, John, a three-nothing field goal advantage in the first quarter for South Dakota State. And here's an injured player, Chris Tracy, the senior from Larchwood, Iowa, holding his left knee. But again, it wasn't until the second quarter that it, things really took off for North Dakota State. As you can see, the to your left of your screen there. No, it's coming here. And down he goes. Yeah, he immediately reached for that. Not a good sign, and hopefully he'll get up and be able to play another down. But you can see his teammate over there beside him, supporting him, and that's part of the leadership that Sharath, Shafrath, you know, brings to that. Uh, you know, that senior leadership over there, making sure his guys are good to go, or let him know that his teammates there for him. We take a look at the other news and notes from the FCS with a coaching change. Trent Miles on the move from Indiana State, moving to Georgia, Georgia State. Trent Miles making that move there. And the Walter Payton Award finalists have been announced with three excellent candidates. And the new coach, Mike Minter, moving from Campbell, or moving to Campbell after spending 10 years in the NFL, most recently with. Jacksonville. As Chris Tracy makes his way off the field, but John to come back to the reset on this game. This is really kind of a third quarter stalemate so far. And the Jackrabbits are going to have to make a move offensively sooner than hopefully for them sooner than later. Yeah, and I think it goes back to the conservative nature of North Dakota State's Head football coach right now, you know, he'll take this back and forth with a 21 to 3 lead as long as San Diego State doesn't get some type of a turnover or anything to turn this football game around. He'll be more than happy to just chew up the clock as much as he possibly can. Ball at the 15 yard line on second down and four. A little confusion for Brock Jensen. It looks like a clock issue. And now they'll reset with three minutes left in our third quarter of football here at the Fargo Dome. This is Ojuri running and not getting much as he goes off tackle. Maybe to the 15, Marshall Pugh on the stop. And give a lot of credit to this Jacks defense so far in the second half. Again, they've kind of bottled up this Bison offense, nowhere to go running the football. And you know, the thing they have to be careful about, and that's the running backs for this North Dakota State offense, is not turning the ball over right now. John, John Crockett had one in the first game against these guys, and you know, the quarterback should be in there talking about ball control right now. A tremendous running back tandem with Ojuri and Crockett. This is third and four. They'll pass. And they'll complete over the middle. That's to Zach Brown, but a tough hit. But it's enough for a Bison first down. They get nine yards to the 24-yard line. Nice job offensively up front. Time to throw the football. Doesn't need to get it down the field. Just needed to pick up that short yardage there. And again, a good hit at the end of that football play. Shafrath makes the stick, but... As we take a look at Chaprath and the great job he's done, the senior from Hampton, Iowa, just continuing continues to get more and more productive. He just hopes that his football career goes beyond today. Ojuri not able to get free, and he was in that tackle as well. Chaprath. Along with T yes, Easy along with for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> along with T.J. Lally. Well, he just doesn't look the part of a middle linebacker. If he's walking down the road, you don't necessarily look at him and say, well, that's, I'm sure that's a 
middle linebacker right there with 132 tackles coming into this football game. Yeah, what in the hair? Maybe, yeah, it's just you don't see that look on a linebacker very often. Certainly letting his hair down here. This is second and eight. Balls at the 26. The Bison milk the clock and a hard throw to Ryan Smith. Very hot and incomplete. Shafrath has 12 tackles today. Just another day. <laughs> I watched him on that play there. You, you know, you kind of focus on him on defense and. You know they sent a guy across the middle and he had him and he just let him go knowing that somebody was going to come into his area so many guys chase guys on that situation he just sat there and was able to keep in his own third and eight final minute of play in this third quarter time and a sharp throw in the middle to Smith complete but short of the first down TJ Lally on the stop and the Bison will have to punt. The credit to South Dakota State's defense. They've been effective this quarter getting the Bison off the field, but no points kind of, on kind of, It's yeah. a moot point if your, your offense doesn't follow with some production, and this is going to. Put the wraps on our third quarter of football. North Dakota State very close to moving into the second round. They've got one quarter of football left here at the Fargo Dome in North Dakota. NCAA.com is your online destination for college sports. With comprehensive video highlights and editorial coverage of FCS, Division II, and Division III football playoffs, along with soccer, volleyball, cross-country, and field hockey championships across all three divisions, NCAA.com has extensive coverage of your favorite schools and your favorite sports this fall. NCAA.com, the home of college sports. The second quarter was the swing quarter here at the Fargo Dome as the Bison faithful love that quarter but 
We start our fourth quarter of football with a fourth and three punt coming. Both punters have done very well. Of course, kicking indoors in early December is uh, helpful to their net punting average. Good pressure, but a clean kick. And Wesley will come up to get it. Stays on his feet, but can't get beyond the 30. And that's where South Dakota State's Jack Rabbit's offense will start. And again, the magic number for Craig Bull in terms of what kind of yardage he could live with from Zach Zenner rushing. He said, if we keep him under 100, I like our chances. Well, right now he's at 48 yards, which is only five yards more than what he had in the entire game when they played here back in November. When you can, any time in a football game, you can keep their top stars in the running back position under 100. It gives your op yourself an opportunity. He knows his football team better than anybody. He's absolutely correct, but he, you know, Zenner's that type of guy that at any given time he gets that little break. You know, he can take it 60 yards on you. So North Dakota State knows that as much as anybody the way they've matched up over the years. Cool on that reception, but he was kept in bounds. Marcus Williams stopped him. Gain of six. Second down and four. This bison crowd here in the Fargo Dome hasn't had to make a lot of noise. See if they can get re-energized. They will on plays like that as Zinner gets hammered by Ryan Dreblow. Well, the big, all the talk all the time about this North Dakota State defense is the edge rush and how these guys come off the edge. This time, when you have edge rushers like that, and you have the ability to stuff it up front like Drevlo does. What a great combination, and that's why South Dakota State hasn't had any success at all. You just can't get to the outside, and if the front guys, front four linebackers and two guys down are playing well, boy, is it tough to run against them. 0 for 8 on third downs so far for the Jacks. Third and five right now. Pressure. No way did he have a chance to throw it. Carlton Littlejohn led the barrage of yellow jerseys into that backfield. Well, Littlejohn, you'll see him coming up the middle there. The right guard looked to the outside, and you, know, you got to protect the quarterback with the most dangerous guy to the inside. He set up, looked to the outside, didn't even get a rush, and couldn't get a hand on Littlejohn. It's always nice when two guys don't block you. Yeah. But he'll get credit for that sack regardless. Ryan Smith on the return. This punt is going to take a hop. And South Dakota State will doubt it. Third sack today for that South Dakota State defense. And they are poised to knock out the Jackrabbits here in Fargo when we return.
More college football tonight. How about that for a showdown game? The ACC championship game. Florida State. Button heads with Georgia Tech. 8 o'clock kick. And also on the watch ESPN app. It's the championship games wind down, but we got a full slate of FCS playoff games today, and we'll keep that rolling into next weekend's quarterfinals as well. And jury on first down. Sorry, Crockett on the carry, and Shafrath on the tackle, but again, time of possession. The team that does the best job of managing the clock in the FCS has the football right now at home with a pretty good fourth quarter lead. When you look at those teams in the brackets and you see Wofford there today, Georgia Southern, these teams that run the football. So much success in the FCS running the football versus looking at the other side of it, the FBS and teams throwing the ball all over the place. Just a whole different different atmosphere hit at this level and I love it because you're deciding everything on the field here. That's not computers it's everybody else it's guys fighting to get to that final game. The Jackrabbits string it out defensively and force Crockett out. David Hediger lead leads that contingency to stop that run from getting around the end. Look at Wolford talk about rushing the football. Is that no, that's not a typo. <laughs> I, I, I trust the guys in the truck that much to know that they wouldn't put that graphic up there. Five, almost 500 rushing yards. Now, I, I'll tell you, you, you get that combination and that option football, and you don't see it very often from a defensive standpoint. You have to face that. Not a whole lot of time to prepare with one week in, in these playoffs. They complete on third and six, but Shafrat busts that one up. And that's going to bring up fourth down, and the punting unit comes back. We should reference, John, that, again, these teams are playing for the second time head-to-head -head this year. The early game, a 20-17 to North Dakota State win. But that game got very close late. This game is, is unfolding somewhat similarly because South Dakota State's offense was kind of stuck in the mud for most of the game. Until late, can they re-energize here in this fourth quarter? And the punt is caught at the 10. And I don't think he had enough room to catch that punt. And I think that's what the flag's for. I have to agree with you there. He threw it right after he made that catch. You could see it throw it right in that direction. So I have to agree with you that that's a call on that. And first indication is it was interference. So we'll get the call straightened out here. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. So a break for the Jackrabbits on special teams. They need points here in Fargo against the Bison.
Lots of football left here at the Fargo Dome, but three points in the first quarter, and since then it's been all Bisons on defense, putting the hammer down. Some sacks, some picks, that's Marcus Williams. And again, the hits just keep on coming. And now it's first and 10 at the 28-yard line. As the Fargo Dome gets re-energized. And a delayed handoff to Zenner, and he's got tacklers all around to put him down. And a flag, though, gets thrown late. Chase Douglas, one of the tacklers. Holding. Defense, number 61. Ten-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. Results in a first down. So Brian Schatz, freshman from Denmark, Wisconsin, helping the Jackrabbits a little bit. Ball goes to the 39-yard line. Sumner airs it deep, and it is dropped. Oh, that was a huge opportunity, and Sumner can't believe it. Brandon Hubert caught a long ball earlier over the middle. John, this one he should have had. No question about it. It was a perfect throw by Sumner. You can see it hit him right in the hands, and he knows as much as anybody that he come, should come down with that football. The longest play of the game offensively for the Jackrabbits was the 50-yard catch that set up their field goal. This brings up second down and 10. And this play will not go further. Prior to the snap, ball start offense. Number 76, five-yard penalty, second down. It's Brian Witzman. Now, Dan, I'll go back to what you were talking about before the end of that third quarter about the difference in this team starting to, you know, they came on during the fourth quarter of that first game they played against each other. Somewhat of that had to do with North Dakota State playing back. Didn't want to give up that big play like they did just then. So you just wonder, is that going to scare them a little bit to play more of a base defense and not give up that big play? Second and 15. Here's a deep ball near side for Tyrell Cool, and it is caught. What a circus catch by Tyrell Cool. Andre Martin stopped him. He kind of stopped himself. Well, I'd love to see a replay on this. Well, we'll see a replay right here. And at the end, too, you can look at Andre Martin. Looks like he had his hands all over the receiver at the end of this play here. And you can see him fighting a little bit. And I'm not sure why the referee didn't throw the flag for pass interference on that play. But all for naught anyway as South Dakota State picks up a huge first down. He was just... Just enjoying that spectacular catch. It's <laughs> a completed catch. Previous play is under further review. So again, the crowd is going to be disappointed here. But we'll look at this replay. Well, I don't know. That's his arms under that ball, right? And he's got control. I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to agree with you, but uh, I may have to disagree. It may not be a catch here because he's got the ball well, against him, and it looks like maybe the ground. I, I, I guess what would be really unfair is if this is called an incompletion. It's pretty hard to not see the interference yeah. before the catch so yeah one thing they can't review is, is is that regardless if he caught the ball or not but you're talking about the difference of 15 yards and a and a long pass play down the field so you know who knows i don't know if they'll overturn this if there's enough evidence for them to do that but in a reminder that the the replay cannot be used until this second round of the scs playoffs it is not used in the first round no, a little bit different here, but uh, it's interesting when you take a look from our perspective down here. Fans looking up, trying to get replays there. Looking at officials on field, trying to make. Trying to help the official make a decision on this. And they did actually they did use replay last week in that first round, but 
Uh, it, it is just now coming into play for all the rounds of these FCS playoffs. So again they're working aggressively to read this again and what we're looking for is did he have possession. Yeah, I see the ball. I see the on ball. The ground OK. I, well I, is that the nose of the ball. Yeah I think. They, uh, OK. I think they reverse this. OK. Well it's going to really. After further review, the ball hit the ground, making it an incomplete pass. The ball will be spotted at the 34-yard line. It will be second down. So it's coming all the way back. And unfortunately for South Dakota State, they can't review that pass interference because I will argue that pass interference all the way on that play. So the whole thing's a wash. And it gives the Bison crowd a little bit more to get fired up about. And it brings up third and 15. And again, the third down frustrations continue for South Dakota State. 0 for 9. Again, this is a Southland Conference officiating crew. Not sure what John Stiglmeyer's trying to. Correction on the down. It's third down. So, Buddy Gingras straightens that out, and it doesn't make things any easier now for the Jacks. Who thought they had a big play in their back pocket that got taken back. Here's a deep ball and it's too high. Intended. For Aaron Rowland and it brings up fourth down. Sumner had his receiver that time. That ball just got away from him. Looked at him after he threw that ball he was reaching down like it almost slipped out of his hand. Reaching down to his top towel, trying to dry that, that hand, but that one may have just slipped on him a bit because he had his receiver open. Break out the noise meter on fourth and 15. Too high and out of bounds and incomplete. And the Bison defense holds again. Boy, that missed opportunities right off the hands here. This was their best scoring opportunity of the day right there. And then this no catch at the end. And then overthrow on fourth down there. And that's a tough throw for a quarterback. He was well covered, nowhere to go with it, but you want to give somebody a chance, even if you turn the football over there. So Brock Jensen's in business with 949 left and O'Jury will put his head down for a gain of one and now it is clock management time for the Bison and this is what they do so well. Yeah they'll look at the play clock here there's 32 seconds to go right now and they'll take this thing down and you can see Coach Bowl looking immediately to the play clock wondering how much time do I have before we have to do run anything or snap the football. Shafferth has been excellent today with a lot of tackles for the Jackrabbits on defense, but they need to whip up a turnover and get the ball back for their offense. Jury again. This time he stays up a little bit longer, but boy, they're just going to pound it between the tackles. 
TJ Lally on that stop. They're getting a bit chippy down there. You can see Andy Mink kind of pushing the offensive lineman at the back of that pile there, and people took exception to it. You get a little bit of that up front. These guys have been fighting hard all night. Again, South. This North Dakota State team using up the entire play clock. Nine seconds to go. Third and five at the 29, and they're certainly close to field goal range as O'Jury gets the handoff and can't quite get enough for a first down. He needed to get to the 24. He's about a half yard short. Bo Hell makes the stop. So no problem they just bring in Adam Keller for a field goal opportunity they won't they'll stay they'll keep the ball moving on fourth and one they've had a very very good success rate on fourth down this year so they'll forget the points and they'll Try to keep the first down. There's O'Jury getting the first down inside the 20. Skyler Luxa makes the stop, but it's another first down pickup. Boy, you can see him struggling there. He already had the first down holding on to the football. And at the end of that play, Brock Jensen, the quarterback, see him limping back to the huddle. A couple players helped him up. I didn't see what happened to him at the end of that, but it was long after he handed the ball off. You can see him limping up to the line of scrimmage there. He'll stand or center, though, with the ball at the 16 yard line on first down. O'Jury gets a little bit of room, and then it closes up. So this is. This offense should be very vanilla for North Dakota State going forward. I think you talk about that. I think that's the same play. They ran three or four plays in a row, and they'll continue to go and run out right over that left side. And they've had success. Why not? They're just chewing up minutes as they continue to move this drive down the field. This is second down and seven. Jury again with an opening inside the 10. The jury's been getting a more touches than Crockett, but Crockett's had the big yardage runs for North Dakota State when the Bison have needed them. Again, to go back to that second quarter, that's where this game really turned around for the Bison. They got all their points in that second quarter. And have not been challenged since. It was after Crockett had that that big burst to the right side, picked up the yardage, and that Bison offense got on a roll at the end of that first half. Play fake, Jensen rolls, complete, touchdown. They go to the tight end again, a smart throw. Garrett Brune again. This guy is all over the place. 10 yard throw for a touchdown and a little icing on the cake for the Bison. And the coaches talked about Garrett Bruin, a guy that missed five games because of an ankle, and they were happy to think that he could get back in this lineup. Didn't know what contributions he could make today, and he's made a lot of contributions to this offense. Another touchdown catch. Keller hits the point after. And North Dakota State's. Second touchdown throw of the day from Brock Jensen. They are fired up here in Fargo.
North Dakota State takes another big step towards a quarterfinal game in the FCS playoffs. That will come next weekend. And let's go back to earlier in this game in the second quarter when things hadn't really gotten started up yet for the Bison. Here's the uh, misdirection. And Ryan Smith is going to rumble in untouched from 32 yards out for that score. And that was the that was when the train started leaving the station yes. for the Bison. And here's the return by Dom Wright on the kickoff and everything's going to be on the table now for South Dakota State. And if you're talking about a team that builds its foundation defensively like the Bison do, John, how about this stat? The Bison have now given up just 30 points in their last five playoff games combined. Going back to last year, obviously. Yeah, you win the championships with the defense, and that's what you talk to Coach Ball about. And he knows that uh, you know, if you're going to win it, that's how you're going to win it on that side. They don't do a whole lot of fancy things on offense. They may have done the fumble ruski and scored that touchdown. And that was a, you mentioned the train that got things started, but this defense is the conductor. Jason Schneider on that catch. And it is hurry up and go time. With just over five minutes left, and the Jackrabbits are going to need a lot of big plays to extend their season, complete to Tyrell Cool. They had some late surges offensively when they met earlier this year, but that was when it was just a workable deficit. There's a high throw intended for Zenner that falls incomplete and stops the clock with 445. And one thing we haven't touched yet, John, is that the youth of this North Dakota State team is just something that uh, is so exciting for Craig Bull to work with. Only seven seniors on this team. And look at this rush. They complete before the pressure and it's Zenner. Sorry, not Zenner, but Brandon Hubert on the catch. Yeah, and of those seven seniors you see there, just three of them are starters. So there's a lot of young players on this football team. They may be young players in class, but they're players with a lot of experience when you talk about the playoffs and the national championship and the amount of games they get to play and the amount of practice they have. So they may be young in class, but their football experience is a lot older than that. Jason Schneider incomplete on the slant mount. Andre Martin on the cover. And they still have it converted on third down. This is fourth and two. And they'll certainly have to go for it. But they have converted on both of their fourth down opportunities. Ball at the 42 yard line. Sorry, they're 0 for 2 on their fourth down conversions. Pressure and down goes Austin Sumner. Brian Dreblo came pounding in. They brought the pressure on fourth down. And it gets them the football back. Well, pressure all day long. Sumner hasn't had the opportunity on third down or fourth down to be able to get the ball down the field. They've had some success early on early downs trying to get it deep, but in throwing situations, he has just not had the time to complete a football. So the Bison are going to get the football back, and Austin Sumner will sit, and it is a new quarterback with Carson Wentz, the freshman from Bismarck, North Dakota. Who's been playing behind Jensen all year? And he'll hand on first down, and there isn't much there. Derek Lang, the ball carrier, so we're going to get some new personnel on the field for North Dakota State's Bison, who are ready to take that next step into the FCS. After the play, personal foul on the defense, number 54. 
It's a 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's David Hediger, as you can imagine the frustration for South Dakota State. They put up a 58 to 10 win in round one. And then the pendulum swings the other way. They come back with a three point effort. In the four quarters of football here. At the Fargo Dome. And it's been getting a bit as I mentioned before in the last series when North Dakota State's on offense. Defense for South Dakota State a little chippy. You know not happy having to exit this tournament. Carry on first down for Lang. Winston Wright makes the tackle. Game clock continues to roll after a four yard gain. Wentz, good size as a quarterback, backup quarterback, listed at six, four and a half. He's a Junior Jensen's the junior out here. This guy was a great athlete in high school, played basketball, number one team, and big baseball player too. 213 rushing yards for North Dakota State. A whole lot less for South Dakota State's Jackrabbits. Lang carries again. As we creep up on the two minute mark. Here at the Fargo Dome. South Dakota State's Jackrabbits had a few chances to get some big plays offensively, but they didn't have anywhere near enough. Another handoff again. Lang will negotiate down to almost the 10. And a quiet section for the visitors from South Dakota State who really never had a whole lot to cheer about, especially once North Dakota State's offense got revved up and on track in that second quarter. Yeah, the first quarter gave them some life, the opportunity to get on the board with a field goal. Field goal, and then, uh, you know, since that time, it just has not gone their direction. This is fourth and three. With Carson Wentz under center. And off again, and met at the line is Derek Lang, and he's short of that first down, but it's academic. Bison will bring their offense off the field and they'll get a rousing applause from their fans here. Some of them already getting the jump and beating the traffic outside the Fargo Dome. A timeout here. We'll come back for the final few minutes of this game here at the Fargo Dome.
great programs and great coaches. Here's one of them, Craig Bull, who's had a tremendous run here at North Dakota State. Two-time conference coach of the year, and everything's uh, right where he wants it, John. A, a foundation built on defense, and he is an Eddie Robinson Award finalist this year. And where do you get a suit like that? Can you buy those in Fargo or... I don't know, but I bet you Coach Bowl can wear it anywhere in town right now. Yes, he can. Nobody would say a thing to him. <laughs> and there's Zetter on first down, and the Bison defense isn't content to take any time off here in this final minute of play. Loss of two. Loss of two yards. And the pressure coming. And Sumner just works his way out of bounds. So the next step for this Bison team is the quarterfinals next weekend. And look at that. Talk about uh, two teams that uh, are going to have a very interesting game. The Notre Dame, the uh, no North Dakota State rushing defense that is so effective here against Wolford's rushing game. Again, they rolled up 454 yards yeah. in their win today. Yeah, I think any questions will be asked about that talking point. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of uh, film for coaches to review and digest and process. And Craig Bull will keep the track to repeat as FCS champions right on track. You know, the, again, the interesting thing with one week to prepare for the game, and triple option type stuff. All of that that's going Thank on. Thank you. Very difficult to get that, get ready and prepare for that. So they'll have a whole lot of work to do this week. Deep throw and almost caught. That was Brandon Hubert again. They've gone to him for long throws game clock stops with 13 seconds left and there's Zach Zenner had almost 300 yards rushing last week but hard to get yardage on the ground here in the Fargo Dome against this Bison defense and you look back at the first game he had 43 yards rushing in the first game and 46 today and this Bison defense certainly has his number Tight coverage on Tyrell Cool. Again, Sumner just a sorry, Zach Zetter just a sophomore, so got a tremendously bright future. 2,000 yard rusher this year. And South Dakota State knows that their objective next year is to get back to this game and maybe go a little bit deeper. There's a completion. And that's going to put a wrap on this North Dakota State win here at the Fargo Dome. A quiet first quarter, but they came on like gangbusters in the second quarter with 21 unanswered points. And it's off to the quarterfinals for Craig Bull. And the North Dakota State Bison. I tell you that yeah, it's, it's an impressive football team. Coach Bowl said he you know he talks football all day long to these guys and how they should play it, how they should live it on and off the field, and that's exactly what these guys do. They live it every day and they play just like their coach wants, hard and fast. Final score here at the Fargo Dome, 28 to three, for my partner John Gregory. I'm Dan Gatowski. Thanks so much for joining us. To watch this game and all the other ESPN games, download the Watch ESPN app. We say so long from Fargo, North Dakota.